Gentlemen, welcome to the week nine wrap up, this 13th season here at Blood, Sweat and Beers. It's kind of an odd week, really, as we reflect back, and not just because Aaron Rodgers uh, decided to fool everybody and pretend like he was going as John Wick for Halloween, but instead spend the entire week doing his best Antonio Brown impression and going just a little bit crazy. Hopefully that doesn't continue through the rest of the season. Um, but, but again, not necessarily because of that, although that obviously had an effect on uh, our games. But when you look at the scores, it seemed it was kind of an odd, uh, odd week. No one broke 150. And our number one score, previously number one scoring team, uh, Light Rail Coyote, didn't even break 100 for the second week in a row. Uh, I'm not sure how having Derek Henry in his lineup was getting him an extra 100 points every week, but apparently it was because now he's been under 100 twice in a row. Uh, again, the only person this week who didn't break 100. So strange things happened this week, and it's hard not to maybe put something into the the, the idea that Hoffman did something funky as he uh, joined me last week in, in last week's wrap up. Now, I don't normally go backwards. I don't normally recap a recap. I don't normally go back and call anybody out for things, maybe in chat, but not necessarily on video. But the sheer number of inaccuracies and, and what proved to be very poor uh, assumptions really just made me think, how many were there? So let's go back and let, let's take a look at, at some of those. So the first few, I think, really had to do, unfortunately, they had to do with me and had uh, a real direct bearing on the my game and, and the results of it. I feel like you have some, some like the next two weeks are very good odds you'll win. The next two weeks, the odds are very good that I'm going to win. So I lost the first week after he said that. So even if I win this week, I'm 50-50, right? 50%. I, I don't know how that works into the odds. I know that as a winning percentage, 50% is not good. Um, I guess maybe if you're talking about a 50-50 shot at winning the lottery, most people would consider that to be good. If you bat... Uh, 50 percent bat 500 in, in major league baseball you're a multi-millionaire but um i know that's not quite the same as the the probability of winning but obviously it didn't work out so well um so my my odds i guess weren't all that good what else did he say i definitely think you can start trending the other way i was looking at your losses they were all so most of them were super close yeah thanks for that one uh, so I got handed my worst loss of the season, 36 points. And so, uh, frankly, I was never even in that game. I checked it at the beginning of the game. And, and you know how sometimes the defense can give up sort of a false stat. It inflates the number right in the beginning. And it, the projections look crazy. These were real numbers. Um, by halfway through the second quarter of the early games, I was down by 30 and I just never caught up. I was never in this game. So, um, you know, thanks for calling out the fact that I hadn't really been blown out prior. Set me up nicely for the for the blowout. So cool for that. That, that wasn't really the only thing, though. He, he mentioned something else that I think maybe, maybe Joe took personally. I think that kitten's, yeah, I got some, we got declawed. Yeah. Clearly, that was not the case. High scoring team of the week. Still just a, a hair under 150, which is not typically what our high score is. But it doesn't matter. High score of the week. The mittens came off, the claws came out, and uh, unfortunately, I was on the receiving end of that. Thanks again, Hoffman. Now, this is kind of interesting. The next clip here, we were talking about Ian's team, and we're talking about Hale Murray. I don't think his team looks really strong. I was looking at that. Like, he could start dropping some now. Mm -hmm. His problem is, I mean, you know, 
Najee Harris has turned out to be great, but he, he gets a little soft after that. Okay. Well, I think the obvious uh, response to that is uh, he beat you. So regardless of the bench points, regardless of the strength of the team, regardless of anything that was mentioned there, he won. It, it ended up being a little bit closer than we thought it would be going into Monday night, but it, it really still wasn't all that close. So uh, there's another one. Now this next one, um, again, two teams that I think took us a little personally. Hold my beer, which is the, the <laughs> resident. Just the bad whipping year. boy. Yeah. Yeah, him and Keith. So I guess it should be noted that the whipping boy and Keith, those who uh, were kind of, there were some chuckles about their teams, both won. Uh, and both won by 24 points or more. And so, obviously, any given Sunday, this was a, a weird week, right? Everybody who was trending in certain directions decided to buck the trend, decided that, you know, well, they're just not going to not gonna go along with the status quo. Uh, but I should also note that it wasn't just Hoffman who, who was completely incorrect in, in a number of different things. I, I took part in that too. The Rams look like they're they're pretty legit, and they're going to be doing that for a while. He's he doesn't have golf, you know, where he's just going to take a day off. Yeah. So I was talking about Stafford there, and how great the Rams were, and uh, well, Stafford decided to do his best Jared Goff impression for Halloween, and uh, just about took the week off. Uh, scored ten points which is less than half of his previous low score. Uh, obviously saying he's just not going to take a week off. I guess he decided to buck the trend too. I don't, uh, I don't really know how that went down. But, it, you know, it's interesting to see how the, the, everything worked out. And, and as we went into the week, there were some other questions that I had asked Hoffman. He wasn't inaccurate about everything, as it turns out. Um, there, there were a couple of things, at least one in particular, that he was very accurate about. I'm um, looking at the teams trending up. I mean, there's any one of these, you know, they, they could put up the same points. I've just been fortunate with who I've squared off. I don't feel like it's going to be an easy road. I think there could be definitely some games I'll drop. There will definitely be games that he dropped, um, starting with the very first week after he said that. So he was accurate. Um, not all of it was, uh, was, you know, false information. He was clearly spot on with that one. Um, but it, it just adds to uh, the playoff push. We have five weeks left. Don't forget, we've got a 14th week, not 13 this year. And with five weeks left, no one's more than four games out of first place, which means statistically or technically or mathematically, whichever, however that works out, uh, everyone has a shot at a bye week, you know, the first week of the playoffs. It's going to take a lot of work, more for some of us than for others, uh, but that is an option. It also means that it is wide open for the playoffs. And as we keep saying, you just got to get there. You just got to get there, limp in if you have to, if your team gets hot at the right time. You can also be an Augustus Gloop 9 and win the championship with a losing regular season record. We don't advise that. It looks bad on the rest of us, but it, it clearly can happen. So... Continue to, to fight, look at the waiver wire, which side point, Zach used the waiver pick on a, uh, on a kicker. Uh, but I wanted to leave you with one last thing so that we can see in, in seven or eight weeks exactly how accurate or inaccurate Hoffman was with this particular statement. I'm ready for my second, my second mug. We'll see. Enjoy week 10.